Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. More than a million mobile phones in Australia could be unable to call triple zero very soon. The 3G network those phones rely on is set to be turned off in a few months. Here's Josh to explain. You might know that to make calls and use the internet when there isn't any Wi-Fi, our phones need a little bit of help from mobile networks. 3G, 4G and now 5G. But in a few months, Australia is pulling the plug on 3G, which means people on 3G devices are going to have to upgrade. But experts have now realised that some older 4G phones still need the 3G network to call emergency services. It won't be apparent to users that their handset can't call triple zero after the switchover. They'd only discover this during an emergency. Their original estimate for how many devices this would affect? 740,000, but now it's looking like more than a million. Providers have been hard at work on ways people can check if they're impacted and if they need to upgrade, like Telstra, who've just launched this SMS checker. All of this could delay the 3G shutdown, but for the moment, it's a race against time to get the message out. Cleanup is underway in New South Wales after the weekend's major flooding. Rains on Friday caused big problems across Greater Sydney and the Illawarra, with emergency services rescuing hundreds of stranded residents from floodwaters. Floodwaters have started going down, and while many won't be able to go home yet, people in Sydney's northwest started returning today. We need to make sure that those communities get back on their feet as soon as possible, and those that can can get into their houses ASAP. Now to sport, with all the action from the AFL's Gather Round. Here's Ren. Everybody and their dog gathered round for Gather Round. A weekend full of footy, food and, yes, fun. And it all took place in South Australia. The Pies had a massive scare as Hawthorne came back from 38 points down to get within five points. But the reigning premiers walked away with the win. Now to the Japanese Grand Prix. And the Japanese Grand Prix is underway. But uh, everything quickly went downhill. Off into the wall, off into the wall. Yep, on the first lap, Aussie Daniel Ricciardo collided with Alex Albon, ending both of their races. Oof. In the end, it was all about Red Bull, with Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez finishing first and second. Max Verstappen wins the Japanese Grand Prix. And finally, to this guy. His name is Russ Cook, and he just finished a year-long run. The length of Africa. Yep, Russ Cook ran the length of Africa in 352 days. And, well, I, I think he's feeling pretty happy because not only did he just run the length of an entire continent, but his journey raised more than $1.3 million for charity. And he said he's only a little bit tired. <laughs> Don't know whether that's uh, an understatement or not, but either way, wow. Ugh, now it's time to stretch because I need some space. <laughs> space. Cool. <laughs> First up to space, where a plan is being hatched to capture the sun's rays for electricity. OK, solar panels are nothing new, but these folks are working on solar panels in space that can beam electricity all the way back to Earth. And this is about very large satellites high above the Earth, harvesting the abundant solar energy, converting that to microwaves and beaming it to Earth. The idea is that, in space, there's sunlight 24-7, with no pesky clouds or nighttime getting in the way. Now this might look like a lot of speckly dots, and it is, but this is also the largest 3D map of our universe to date. These are the first released results from DESI, or the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, which is made up of 5,000 tiny robots packed into a telescope. The findings will help build a picture of how the universe has evolved over 11 billion years. And finally, after 204 days on board the International Space Station, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara is returning to Earth. Undocking confirmed. It was Laurel's first space mission, where she carried out research in preparation for future moon missions. Also on board this Soyuz space capsule is Russian cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky and Belarusian Marina Vasilevskaya, who were only in space for a short trip. And we have touched down. And we've reached the end of the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. How do I get back to Earth? <laughs>